How's it going, everyone? Today, we're going to be talking about the posterior pituitary hormones as well as the most likely things they're going to test you on in the MCAT. So first thing we need to know is what is the posterior pituitary? It's going to be a region in your brain that connects to the hypothalamus up here. And different than the hypothalamus to anterior pituitary connection, which is primarily going to be vascular, the posterior pituitary is connected by one large neuron. And that neuron is going to synthesize the two different peptide hormones that the posterior pituitary is going to secrete. It will synthesize those, and then those hormones will travel along down this axon and eventually be released in the posterior pituitary. So there's no vascular bed or portal system that's connecting the hypothalamus to the pituitary, uh, to the posterior pituitary, like there is between the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus. And the two peptide hormones that we're going to take a look at are oxytocin. And the most likely thing they're going to test you on with oxytocin is that it stimulates uterine contractions and labor. And that's one of the few examples that we have physiologically of positive feedback. So that's a very likely test question, as well as stimulating what we call the letdown reflex in breastfeeding or promoting milk secretion during breastfeeding. The second one, which is a bit more high yield, is called antidiuretic hormone, or EDH for short, also called vasopressin. And this has two major roles. One is it's going to constrict blood vessels. That's what the name vasopressin more refers to, pressing down on those vessels. It's actually a drug that we use to increase blood pressure by vasoconstriction in the hospital. Second, more high yield for the MCAT, is that it's gonna increase free water reabsorption in the kidney by mobilization of what we call aquaporins in the collecting duct of the kidney. So we're gonna take water from the kidney tubule and bring it back into the blood. Next, let's do a practice question. So pause this video, try it on your own, and then come back to it. So this question is saying that oxytocin is a peptide hormone. Remember, a peptide hormone is just a fancy way to say a protein. So it's gonna be made up of amino acids synthesized in the supraoptic nucleus of the hypothalamus. So the supraoptic nucleus, not as high yield for the MCAT, but that's basically the neuron that's gonna be creating oxytocin and that axon that is then gonna be traveling down to the posterior pituitary of the hypothalamus and released into circulation by the posterior pituitary. Which of the following physiological processes is most directly mediated by oxytocin? So what we're going to be looking for is one of the two things that we talked about, either the letdown reflex or stimulation of uterine contraction. And really, the answer is going to be E there. It's more of a, do you know it or not know it? Now, don't be faked out by this answer here, production of breast milk. This is not oxytocin necessarily. This is going to be a hormone under the purview of the anterior pituitary. That's going to be prolactin, which is regulated or inhibited by dopamine. Okay, so prolactin actually stimulates the production of breast milk and increases the amount of breast tissue that we have, but oxytocin is what's actually doing the letdown reflex or the stimulation of the secretion rather than the production of the breast milk. So initiation and maintenance of uterine contractions, it's that positive feedback cycle. It's gonna be the most likely thing they test you on for oxytocin on test day. Now, activation of the stress response, that's also going to be another anterior pituitary hormone. Cortisol is primarily going to be involved with that, again, regulated in the anterior pituitary by ACTH, which is regulated by CRH in the hypothalamus. Regulation of the basal metabolic rate, that's going to be more thyroid hormone, which again is regulated by TSH in the anterior pituitary and TRH in the hypothalamus. And development of secondary sex characteristics is going to be under the purview of our um, steroid hormones like testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, etc. And those are going to be released by FSH from the anterior pituitary, which is regulated by gonadotropin releasing hormone in the hypothalamus. Let's try another practice question. So pause this video, try it on your own, and then we'll jump into it. So this one is saying a patient is admitted to the hospital for altered mental status and is found to have low serum sodium levels. We call that hyponatremia in medicine. 
Laboratory results reveal inappropriately concentrated urine. So typically, if someone has low sodium, we don't want to be concentrating our urine. We don't want to be reabsorbing that water from the kidney tubule back into the blood, which is why we're saying this is inappropriately concentrated urine. And the attending physician diagnoses syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, or SIADH for short. Which of the following anatomical locations is responsible for the production of the hormone implicated in this condition? So the MCAT likes to throw in a lot of this extraneous detail. Really, a lot of this doesn't matter. They're asking you, where is ADH made or secreted? That's all they're asking. So you're going to see this long question stem, and you're going to be like, I have no idea what SIADH is, and you shouldn't know something you'll learn in medical school. But really, what they're trying to get at is where is ADH made or secreted? So don't make it harder than it has to be. And you might be looking for the posterior pituitary here, and notice you don't see it, okay? So then we have to look for our next best answer. And that's really gonna be the hypothalamus, because remember, the hypothalamus directly connects to that posterior pituitary through that neuron. So it's going to be made in the neuron and that axon of the neuron is going to travel down to the posterior pituitary. So the hypothalamus is our best answer here. And remember, the hypothalamus is going to connect to the posterior pituitary and make our two peptide hormones. You should definitely know those off the top of your head, oxytocin and ADH. And they could make this question even trickier by using a different name for ADH and that would be vasopressin. Now let's go over the wrong answers. Anterior pituitary, that's primarily going to be our flat pig mnemonic. And so F is going to be FSH, L is LH, A is ACTH, T is TSH, P is prolactin, and G is growth hormone. Adrenal cortex, you should remember some hormones that are secreted there. There are going to be three layers, our glomerulosa, our fasciculata, and our reticularis. The glomerulosa secretes aldosterone. The fasciculata secretes cortisol. And the reticularis does various sex hormones, which are lower yield for the MCAT. The adrenal medulla, what does that secrete? That's going to be our catecholamines. And our three major catecholamines... are going to be norepinephrine, epinephrine, and dopamine. So NE for short for norepinephrine, E for epinephrine, and dopamine. And then our pancreas, what hormones are, is that going to secrete? Three major ones in our alpha islet cells, that's going to be glucagon, that's going to raise our blood sugar. In our beta islet cells, that's going to be insulin, that's going to lower our blood sugar. And in our delta cells, a little bit lower yield, somatostatin.